All right, so it's time to do an English essay and your professor says you need to use library resources. This video is guiding you through how to do that and what to look for. So this is the library website. If you've never been here before, the easiest way to get here is to simply do a search for Tri-C Library. Whether you're in Bing or Google or whatever, the first link that it gives you will take you straight to the library website. So a couple of things to point out. Our hours and phone numbers are listed on the front here, and you can also chat with a librarian from, you know, your phone or from a computer at home. You can call us, you can email us, you can set up an appointment to meet with us through WebEx. So there are a lot of different ways to get research support from librarians, in addition to just walking into the library and going, hey, where is one? So, moving on. What we're going to be doing first is clicking on this orange Research Guides button. Once you've done that, you've got a big list of different subjects. You're going to scroll down until you get to English. And when you click that, you're just going to click on that English drop-down. All right, so I know that there's a lot here. The good news is there are a ton of resources. The even better news is you are not going to need to use all of these. What I'm going to be showing you today are Academic Search Complete, Opposing Viewpoints, and Credo Reference. So you're welcome to explore the others, but these three are generally the ones that are going to be the most useful to you. All right, so let me start off by taking you into Opposing Viewpoints. And quick note, if you're at home and you click a resource, it's going to ask you to log in with your S number and your MyTriC space password. Once you do, this is the type of page that you're going to see. So your starting point on Opposing Viewpoints is scrolling down to the bottom, and clicking on the Browse All Issues link in that blue box on the bottom. And one of the important things to note here is that, uh, number one, this is a fantastic resource to use for brainstorming. If you're not sure what topic you want to write about, there are an almost endless number of topics here that you can pick from. So if you're, you know, on the fence about a couple of things, or if you're just looking for a topic that maybe you haven't thought of, this is the place to go. And next, this list is alphabetical, but if you've thought of a topic already and you're not seeing it, it's an important thing to remember that sometimes topics go by, you know, different terms. So if you came in here thinking that you were going to do a paper on euthanasia, well, there's no euthanasia listed under E's, right? But over in the A's, we're going to find assisted suicide. So sometimes a topic goes by more than one term. So if you don't see your topic on the list, just spend a second and think, okay, what else can this go by? All right. So once you've picked a topic that you're interested in, all you need to do is just click on it. And the layout and the format for almost all of these pages is going to be pretty similar. Up at the top, you usually have an introductory paper or an introductory essay. So when I click read more, this is just long enough to basically brief me on why food waste is a controversial topic right now. So that way, when I start reading different resources, I kind of know what to look for. I've, I've learned a couple of important words and terms and I'm not going into it blind. This is also a really good time to point out that all of our electronic resources, including opposing viewpoints, have built-in citation generators. So that, that highlighted thing right there, is a ninth edition MLA citation, copy-paste, uh, assuming that this is something that you would have read uh, in order to write your paper. So anytime that you read, watch, or listen to something and you use it as a source, you need to cite it, so Citation Generator is amazing. So let me take you back to that main food waste page. And you're going to notice that there are a bunch of different boxes here. So Featured Viewpoints, Academic Journals, Reference, Infographics. There are a ton of different types of resources here. So if you're just starting your research and you're allowed to use a variety of different types of, top, uh, different types of resources, this is a great place to go. Um, just you know, keep in mind that uh, some of these are pretty new, so published in 2022. 
Some of them are 2017 or older. So keep an eye on the date in case your professor has you know, certain limitations about how old a source can be. So a couple of things to point out. These viewpoints, whether it's a featured viewpoint or a plain old ordinary viewpoint, these are like little mini argument essays. So you wouldn't be able to just write a paper about food waste. It's, it's way too big and broad. So that kind of leads to the question, okay, well, what about food waste would you write about? So this uh, article here is saying, well, expiration dates aren't really as important as we think. So, you know, maybe instead of buying a ton of canned food because it's a month out of date, maybe we hold on to it. Maybe that's how we propose uh, reducing food waste. That could be your essay right there. Um, so each one of these viewpoints explores a topic that falls under that big, broad umbrella of food waste, but in a slightly different direction. So that's a really good way of thinking about how you might want to steer the topic of your paper. And one of the things that I want to spend a, a second touching on is the difference between an academic journal and a magazine. So when you think of a magazine, you might be thinking of Time or Newsweek or National Geographic, Sports Illustrated, basically the shiny things that you can get at a grocery store or a gas station. So most magazines are going to be, well, an article in them would be one to maybe five pages long. And magazine articles are written by just journalists, reporters. They, they aren't necessarily experts in any particular area. They're just good at writing stories. So when you're reading a magazine, you're reading something that's relatively short by a pretty normal person for a general audience. And magazines, they, they tug at your heartstrings, whether it's a, you know, a happy story or a tragic story. They're, they're written to be relatable and they're written to be read pretty quickly. So if you're starting your research and you pick up a magazine article, in a few minutes, you're going to know a little bit more and you'll be ready to move on to different resources. On the other hand, an academic journal is usually written by someone who is a professor or a researcher. They usually have a, a PhD. So Dr. So-and-so or Professor such-and-such. So painfully smart people in one really specific area. And an academic journal article is going to be usually between 10 and 30 pages long. So they're much more substantial. There's a lot more research behind them than a magazine. And in addition to being written by an expert, other experts also have to read that article and sign off on it before it can even be published. So that's called peer review. So if your professor says that they want you to use scholarly or peer reviewed articles, those are usually going to be the academic journals. So even though it would be tempting to use a lot of magazines because they're shorter and more approachable, if your professor wants you to use a mix of different resources, it's because they want you to use things that are relatable and tug at the heartstrings and have some, some emotion and feeling behind them, but they also want you to be using things that have some rigorous research behind them. Not only is it something that you can you know, feel and relate to, but something that you can prove. So that's why the different, uh, different resources. All right, so the nice thing is that no matter what type of article you click on here, you're going to have a toolbar up at the top. So if you need a citation for an article, you click Cite. Make sure that you've got your MLA 9th edition citation. There's your citation. Uh, if you need to email this to yourself, you can. If you want to download it or print it, you can do that too. And as we scroll down, you know, there's the rest of that article. And as you can see, it's an academic journal article and there's, you know, pretty decent amount of material there. All right, so that's opposing viewpoints. Let's move on to a different resource. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is Credo Reference. And you've probably had a professor say that you, you aren't supposed to use Wikipedia as a resource for your papers because, you know, who knows who may have edited that Wikipedia article last. Well, Credo Reference is our solution to Wikipedia. This searches hundreds of different encyclopedias that were originally in print. So we know who wrote these and no one's going to be going in and, you know, maybe editing the article. 
So to, to use this, all you need to do is just type in your, your basic topic. So uh, if I was looking for fracking, it would say, oh, hydraulic fracturing, because hydraulic fracturing is actually the official fancy word for what you know most people know as fracking. So I'm going to click that. And this is the type of a result page that you can expect to see. So up at the top here, I've got an article that is 4,061 words long. A little bit farther down, I've got one that's a little over 3,000, and here's 163 words. So if you see something that's about 3,000 words, print it out, that might be five or six pages. It's not that long. So let me click on this and just kind of show you what we're looking at here. That's the length of a decent Wikipedia page, right? So not super long, not terribly intimidating. So if you see something in Credo that's a few thousand words long, don't be afraid to print it and use it. So this is the name of the article. This is the book that it comes from. That's how long the article is. And if your professor has limitations on how old the articles can be, or if you just want to look at things that are, you know, longish and get rid of the things that are 163 words long, that's what these boxes up here can do. So I'm going to tell it I want only long articles. And I'm going to tell it that I want things published between 2019 and 2023. All right. So now I've got a, a much shorter list of results here. But I know that everything here is relatively current. And uh, it, it falls within the, uh, the length that I was looking for. So I'm going to click this one up at the top here. And if I end up using this as a resource in my paper and I need to cite it, I just click Cite. There's my MLA citation. If I want to print it, I can do that. And I can even tell this thing to read itself out loud to me. So pretty cool resource. But there's one thing that I want to make sure that you know about Credo. So encyclopedia articles are really, really good at giving you factual information. But they're not going to tug at your heartstrings and there's not a ton of research behind them. So the point of an encyclopedia article is to give you basic information quickly. So if I was using something like uh, therapy dogs as an example, uh, Credo might give me an article that says, this is what a therapy dog is. This is how they're trained. This is where they're used. This is why they're important. But an, a magazine article would give me a touching story about how a college in the middle of Indiana just started a therapy dogs program and how the students and faculty and everyone just loves it. Uh, if I found an academic journal article about therapy dog programs in colleges, that thing might analyze uh, surveys that students and other people took about those therapy dog programs and use that to analyze how effective and how helpful therapy dogs at colleges actually are. So those different resources are designed to do different things. So that's kind of a long way of saying Credo could be tempting. Please don't try to build an entire paper using nothing but Credo reference articles. All right, so that leaves us with academic search complete. So let's take a look in here. And there's a few more bells and whistles here. And that's perfectly OK. You can ignore almost everything below where it says search options. So let me give you a quick rundown of how this works. There are a bunch of different boxes here up at the top. And that is where you type your keywords. So if you have a thesis statement already, or if you have a research question, what you're not going to do is type that question or that thesis statement into this top box. So Library resources speak in keywords, not in complete sentences. So, for example, if I was doing a paper arguing that uh, one of the best ways that we could reduce police brutality would be to eliminate qualified immunity for police officers, if I type that statement in this box, the database will just go, I don't understand what you're saying. But if I were to say, police brutality, 
and click search. The database then goes, all right, so here's 4,776 articles that have something to do with the term police brutality. It might really focus on it, or it might just mention it in passing, but it's there. So there are a number of ways that you can reduce the number of results. So for example, uh, we see here that police brutality is a subject tag in this book review. Uh, it's a subject tag in this academic journal article. And using this dropdown, we can say, you know what? I only want you to show me the articles where police brutality is a tag. So we're going to go from 4,776 down to about 3,000. That's one way. You can get really picky and say, you know what, if it's not in the title, I don't want to see it. And that's really going to cut your numbers down. Maybe too much. So what I would suggest is I'm going to leave it at subject term because that cuts it down a little bit. But you remember how I was saying before about how you can't just write a paper about big, broad umbrella term? Well, think about it like this. Uh, if I try to write a paper on just police brutality, my paper would probably be several thousand pages long because there's uh, what causes it, how to fix it, uh, the results of it. I mean, there are so many different directions that you can go. So let's say that I decide that I want to argue that ending qualified immunity might be a solution to reducing or eliminating police brutality. So that is what I'm going to type in this next keyword box. So this and here is basically like a plus sign. It's telling the database, only show me an article if police brutality is a subject term and the phrase qualified immunity shows up somewhere in that article too. 21 results. So when you start using this, it's really important to be picky and be specific because 21 is a nice, friendly, approachable number, way better than 3,000 and some, okay? So here's a couple other things that we're, we're gonna wanna do. Number one, uh, if you look at the list here, you'll see that number one and number two have PDF full text articles. And that's great because if you click that, the article is going to pop up, you can read it and print it and everything's great and wonderful. But then there's number three, where there's just this naked empty white space. The database knows that this article exists, but right now you don't have access to it. So to get rid of things like number three, we're gonna go over here to the left and click on this box that says full text. So our number gets a little bit smaller. And now everything that's left is stuff that you can pull up. So whether it says HTML or PDF, that's just formatting. So the, the text is going to be the exact same. HTML may or may not have pictures, but the content is still gonna be identical. If you see something that says full text finder, that's going to basically give you a breadcrumb. So let me click that. And the database goes, all right, so that article is in this other database called the Ohio Link Electronic Journal Center. So we're gonna click that. And over here on the left, is the link for the PDF full text of this article. So the database tries to be helpful, and if it doesn't have it right there, it's going to find it for you. All right, so the other thing I want to do is look at the date. So some of these were written in 2011, which for the purposes of police brutality is pretty old. So I'm going to say, show me things written from 2018 to present. That takes it down to 12. So from here, you can do even more things. You can say, I only want to see magazines, or I only want to see academic journals, or you can just start you know, looking through the list. So if you see something that says periodical, that's fancy database speak for I'm a magazine. If you see an academic journal, chances are that's going to be one of those scholarly peer-reviewed articles that it was talking about. And what you can do is if you're a little on the fence about whether you want to use a particular article, click on the title, because that is usually going to give you an abstract. And this is sort of like a trailer for a movie. 
it gives you a good idea about whether you want to watch the rest of that movie. It's not a replacement for watching the rest. So this summary here is going to give you, hopefully, enough information about the, and I warned you, 45 page long article and whether it would be worth your time to read this. Um, if you look at it and go, eh, not quite what I'm looking for, or if you just look at it and go, oh no, 45 pages, you can go back to your result list and keep clicking around. So the other thing I'll show you is that this is just one database. So Academic Search Complete is one of the resources made by this EBSCO host company. And depending on your topic, you might be talking about a topic that is uh, deeply entrenched in health or sociology, so people sciences, uh, maybe criminal justice. Uh, so there's a lot of different uh, topics out there that people might write about. And Academic Search Complete is sort of a starting point. It's an everything but the kitchen sink kind of resource. But where it says choose databases, there are a lot of other databases that you can look through. And each one of these is kind of like its own little miniature library. They all hold different uh, magazines and journals from each other. So uh, if I was going to look in other databases, I can click the arrow here and get you know, a detailed explanation of what exactly Soch Index is, but that's a people sciences database. Um, I could also look in the criminal justice database. I could look in the political science database. And when I click OK, it's going to wipe my results, but it's going to keep my terms. And then when I redo my search and say, yeah, I still want full text, and yeah, I still want things published from 2018 to present, instead of 12, now I have 16. So sometimes adding a few more databases might give you just enough. Um, it might give you, you know, plenty to choose from, but it's just an important thing to keep in mind. All right. And the last thing I'm going to show you uh, is, well, actually, I take that back. Two things. So when you click on the title, you get the abstract. So that, that helps with your decision making. If you need a citation, over on the right hand side, you can click on where it says cite. And then if you need the MLA citation, you just scroll down to where it says MLA. There's your citation. Copy paste. Uh, you can email this to yourself. And if you need a link to take you back to this page, important thing to remember is that copying the URL at the top of your page will not work. Um, that is a one-time thing. So if you need a URL that will take you back here, where it says permalink over on the right-hand side, when you click that, this little kind of hard to, to see box here, that link, if you copy and paste it into a Word document or an email, and you click this one later, this link will take you back to this exact page. All right, so now the last thing. Uh, we saw at the very beginning of this example how I did a search, and I saw that, hey, police brutality shows up in these subject tags. Well, there's a way for you to search through the database's list of subject tags and see, like, hey, what's the official term for this? So I'm going to give you a quick example. So I'm going to uncheck everything except Academic Search Complete, so we're back at our starting point. And you'll see that there's a blue bar up at the top here that says Subject Terms. When you click on that, this is the big old master list, and you could click Next until you are ready to retire. But this is the box that you want to look at. So if we were looking at something like food waste, so uh, either you buy groceries and you end up not using it and throwing it away, or a restaurant uh, ends up throwing away meals or uh, groceries that they bought and never used, that's food waste. So there are a few different ways that you can search for these terms. You can look for terms that begin with words. So if I were to type, uh, artificial intelligence, it would look for all of the terms that begin with the word artificial. But if we want this thing to try and figure out what exactly it is that we are looking for, that's what this relevancy ranked button does. It tells the database, all right, database, 
Here's the term I use. Try to figure out what you think this means. So I'm going to click Browse, and I've got food waste, I've got uh, food industrial waste. So, like I said, it's kind of smart. And if I click on food waste, here are entered works on food that is served at home or in institutions and then throw, thrown out uneaten. So if I were to click this and say add and then search, there's all the articles where food waste is a subject tag. So there's a couple of different strategies that you can use here. So that's where I'm going to leave this. But if you have questions, if you get stuck, if you're uh, trying to replicate these sort of things and you're, you're not getting the kind of results you, look, you, you want or uh, you're getting too many or not enough or it just looks totally wrong, uh, like I said at the beginning of this, on the library website, you can chat with librarians, you can call us, you can email us. And let me just pull up the... Uh, so that's what the email form looks like. If you want to talk to the person that's doing this video here, uh, under the library staff directory button, there's me. So there's my phone number, my email address is linked to my name, so feel free to reach out to me. All right, good luck.